What's going on, everybody? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love After Lockup slash Life After Lockup. This is season 2.5 to the third power. Y'all already know how to do. <laughs> episode 41.3 to the third power. <laughs> Manipulate the manipulator, y'all. Before we get into this review, y'all already know church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel now. I be giving y'all this good shit, okay? Before you leave, let me know, okay? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. Either way it go, I know that you stop by. And then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever your auntie done uploaded some new contents, okay? If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm your auntie Mo, your favorite crap talking auntie here with your unsolicited commentary on some of your favorite shows so hopefully y'all gonna enjoy this review because i'm ready to give it to you so let's go ahead and get right on up into it y'all so first up we got britney and marcelino y'all know i love me some britney and marcelino they are my favorite couple because they're the ones that actually somewhat got their stuff together whatever right so britney and marcelino sitting down talking britney letting him know like look here bruh I love you and I appreciate everything that you've been doing for a bitch since I done got out of jail and the prison penitentiary and all of that. But I'm going to need you to get you a for real, for real job. Now, y'all know Marcelino is a professional poker player. Now, he ain't he the big, big, like in the millions or nothing like that, but that's his dream. As for right now, you know, he pretty all right. Probably hit a couple, you know, thousands, couple grands or whatever on there. But Brittany's like, look here, since you've been playing this poker, I need you to be more present, more in the moment. You know what I'm saying? We already got two kids and we got another Bambino on the way. She just wants him to have a more secure job. You know what I'm saying? Something you can get some damn W-2s from at the end of the year and say, this is what I did. You know what I'm saying? Now, he's been providing for his family off this, you know, poker life that he's been, you know, doing or whatever. You know, he's able to provide and all of that. But I would bring you on this, you would think that Brittany is the one that, that has been out here on the streets the whole time and Marcelino was the one that's locked up. He got a dream of hitting it big, which he might, you know, luck might, Lady Luck might be on his side one damn day. But in the meantime, in between time, nigga, I'm gonna need you to get something that's for real. <laughs> we can let Uncle Sam know, hey, look here, you know, we really trying to get this paper. What if you crap out at the damn table some you know, nigga, who gonna pay for all these damn kids? She's trying to tell him, look here, if I could go out and get a job, I been and did that, but obviously I'm a felon. <laughs> they see I've been up here in the streets robbing, doing whatever the fuck I had to do. So it ain't just like I can just go up anywhere and get a doggone job. Marcelino's thing is he ain't trying to work with some old 20-some-year-old snot-nosed kid trying to tell him what to do. And I feel him on that. You know what I'm saying? I feel him. I get him. I'm totally with it. But at the same damn time, like she said, nigga, I ain't telling you you got to go to Mickey D's and flip no burgers. <laughs> This week, you mopping floors. Next week, it's the fries. I ain't saying that. But what I am saying is we're going to have to do something other than this poker. You know what I'm saying? She trying to do it. But Marcelino, he like, look here. That's what I dig about Marcelino. You know what I'm saying? He don't completely shut Britney down and, and her arguments are valid with him and all that. So he like, you know what, boo? You show right. Nick finna get in here and get and see what I can do for you and these doggone kids. So Marcelino ends up going meeting with a, a recruiter, um, like at a temp agency or something. You know what I'm saying? And before he goes in and meets with the recruiter, y'all, they show flashbacks of him in his modeling days. I ain't no Marcelino used to be no model. He had a little Rico Suave thing going. I was like, Ripa, me, you looking a little fly and finessed up with the Pantene hair and all of that. He was like, cute. And then he said when he went to the military, I think, yeah, I think he was in the military. After that, you know what I'm saying? He done went to school. He done got his master's and all of that. Marcelino ain't no dumb dude. Okay, he didn't serve this country and he didn't serve them books. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do what he had to do. He got degrees and all of that. So he's already thinking, okay, I'm going to be able to finesse my way up in here. I'm come out with a management position. You know what I'm saying? Probably end up being somebody boss or something. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I do the craps tables. You know what I'm saying? I do the poker. This ain't shit. That's what he thinking walking into the agency. Oh, but he was in for a real goddamn awakening. So he goes in, he sits down with the recruiter, and the recruiter's like, okay, so what's your background? Like, what is your cap? What are you not willing to go beneath? You know what I'm saying? Like, let me know who you is. What's up with you? What you been doing? What you trying to do? You know what I'm saying? Marcelino, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I got a master's in this. 
whoop de woo yada yada Marcelino got a mouthpiece on him if he ain't got nothing else he got a mouthpiece on him I can do this you know what I'm saying probably like you know what I'm saying 60 70 thousand if it's all right with you if, if you willing to start there you know what I'm saying I'm gonna let you make the choice but you know what I'm saying I can probably do some education teach a couple motherfuckers something you know what I'm saying because I'm smart like that and you know what I'm saying you know it is what it is recruiter was like you say excuse me what now you say 60 70 thousand Okay, what kind of experience you got with this sixty seven thousand? You think you just finna walk up here and walk out with Marcelino? Like she, you know what I'm saying? I'm Marcelino, baby. <laughs> I knows it all. Uh, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So when you need nigga start, you need a copy of my social and my ID. Like, what we what we finna do? Um, the recruiter was like, "Well, look here. Uh, well, um, I show sure appreciate ya." Appreciate you coming by. But um, with no experience, no nothing in this thing, ain't nobody just finna hire you off the strength that you say you can do all of this. Cause you know what I'm saying? You've been playing poker for these last couple years. I'm not finna take a gamble on 67,000 invested in you. And your ass ain't finna put that 67,000 invested back in me. What if you hit a big at the table? You hit a cool meal. You like to hit with your job. I'm finna be the hell up on about What I'm finna do then? Huh? What a nigga supposed to do then? So afterwards, the recruiter was like, he was telling the cameraman, he said, I think your boy kind of came in here like, uh, he had this thing down, but really, you know, he needs to sit back and humble by himself, get you some experience going on about you, build up your little old resume, and then come back and holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Marcelino took that like a man, though. You know what I'm saying? He could have went all left with it, but he didn't. He went outside and called Brittany. He was like, yo, Brittany, what's up? You know what I'm saying? Like, it went good. It went really, really good. Um, I'll call you when I get back. You know, I'll talk to you in a little bit, though. All right? Yeah. All right, cool. He know. He going to have to have his story together when he go home because she going to be like, yep, yeah, mm hmm I told your ass so. You doing just as bad as I am. So, like I said, <laughs> that snot-nosed 21-year-old kid don't look so goddamn bad now, does it? Next up, y'all, we got Andrea and Lamar, y'all. <laughs> Lamar in studio with Dulo. They rapping, you know what I'm saying? Getting they thug, thizzle, izzle for shizzle, my nizzle, all up in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Dulo just got shot in the foot. It's real out here on these streets. Dulo say, you know what I'm saying? When I was looking down a barrel of the gun, all I could think about is, one day you hear, baby. And then you go, he was, I was like, look at this thug shit right here. Thugnificent shit right here. Now, he's saying how much he misses Andrea and the kids. He hasn't seen them in a little while. So, he's, you know, excited to make his trip back down there, up there, wherever there is, to Utah, so he can see her and the kids. He ends up FaceTiming Andrea, and he's like, look here, I miss you. You know what I'm saying? I'll be doing even better if you were here, though, Lo. She like, nigga, you only saying that because Dulo got shot in the foot. That's it. He like, well, yeah, but, I mean, that's the re that ain't the only reason, no, but, you know what I'm saying? I miss you, though, girl. I miss you. Now, he's saying that he's going to go there to see her and the kids and all this and the other. Now, she tells him, like, you know, first she kind of like, well, you just can't be popping up here, this and the other. I'm like, popping up, bitch, y'all married. <laughs> he can pop up wherever the hell he wants to. Why the hell y'all popped out of each other's lives and y'all living in two different states? That don't make no doggone sense to me, but y'all still married, but y'all barely talk. Baby, if it's me, I'm going to FaceTime that nigga every day. I'm going to be at the door. It, come on now. That's just crazy to me. Anyways, you know, they like it. They love it. They want some more of it, all right? Now, y'all remember the last time he went there to Utah, she tried to misery trap his ass. So, Lamar, I'm just going to let you know this. Be careful, Loke, when you go up there. She going to put a doggone brick between your leg, your, your ankles, and break shit up, and you ain't going to have no reason but to stay there in Utah. I'm just saying. But he's excited to get there and go see the kids and all of that, right? So later on, Andrea and the kids, they're making welcome home posters for Lamar so they can pick him up from the airport. He can feel all good, daddy's home and all of that, right? Now, the son, Tennyson, that's my niece, folks. She's right there. The kids seem excited for him to come home, right? Um, Noelle, her daughter, she's really excited because she's like, good, find this nigga teach me how to drive because your ass don't know how to drive. That ain't what she said, but I know it's what she's goddamn thick, right? Baby girl, of course she excited because that's her daddy. We gonna call it <laughs> closet baby. Y'all, I can't believe y'all let me miss last time somebody called me out in my comments the way Andrea was 
bust down Adriana off in the doggone broom closet at the Bust down, Adriana. Bust down. But they all excited. Andrea is telling Tennyson, like, um, well, she's asking Tennyson, can he sleep in your room when he come? Because we marry, but we not together together. We partially together. Tennyson's like, look here, mom, I'm not with all this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, he can't sleep in my room. He your husband. Y'all work out whatever shit y'all got going on. We ain't gonna do all of that. Like, don't drag me in y'all shit. Mama, what does you know? So they get to the airport. They got their little old signs and they waiting for Zaddy to come home. Welcome home, Zaddy. This, that, and the other. They, they, they ready. They waiting and they waiting and they really, really waiting. He don't show up, so they thinking, right? I don't know if the nigga flight got delayed or what it was, or whatever the hell was going on. Anyway, girl, child, the nigga finally does show up, right? He come. Baby girl is excited. You know what I'm saying? She like, Zaddy, Zaddy, Zaddy. You know what I'm saying? She go jump in his arms, hugging all of that. Andrew's a little pissed off because they been sitting up that way she thought that he stood her ass up but he didn't stand your ass up and it didn't matter Adriana bust down Tatiana you was gonna sit there wait for his ass anyway if you have to wait in another broom closet because <laughs> we know your ass to do it you was gonna sit there and wait on his ass any guy gonna wait right so they in the airport they getting ready to leave as they leave it girl Adrian sees a big ass group of Mormon boys on their way out to a mission of course to her that was a sign from God, she's like, oh my God, my son is getting ready to go on this mission too. Meanwhile, Tennyson on the side, like, oh my God, mom, please. Why does she fucking do this every time? He embarrassed. I'd have been embarrassed too. She done introduced the whole doggone family to the group of Mormon boys. She like, this is a sign from God right here that everything is supposed to line up the way it is because we see these group of Mormon boys. I mean... If this ain't God, I don't know what it is. Next up, y'all, we got Megan and Mike. We're going to start with Megan and Mike first, right? Why Mike come to the door looking like little snot-nosed-ass Roscoe? <laughs> what? For Mark. Can Megan come out and play? That's exactly what his goddamn ass look like. With his hair on, wow. Now, look here. First and foremost, as soon as he came to the door, daddy came to the door, opened up that door, at the Nick, can I help you? Now, of course, Megan is hoping that daddy is going to approve of Mike. M mind you, Mike came over there looking a hot ass goddamn mess. Hair all over his head. I mean, it was pulled back. It was very moisturized. I give him that. But nigga, you should have wore a cap. You should have wore something on your head. Because that's the old school daddy. He looked like he going to tell you, and he does. He tells him about his goddamn self. Because soon as they get there, he come in, you know what I'm saying? He hugs Megan, try to give daddy that. Daddy like, oh, my nigga, they ain't going to be here for. I'm going to have you go ahead and go to the back, you know, go, 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 go sit down at the table so we can wrap a taste real quick. You know what I'm saying? We can talk, nigga. We ain't here to be friendly. I'm trying to figure out what the hell is going on with you and my damn daughter. You know what I'm saying? I done got real hood with daddy voice all of a sudden. I don't know where that came from. But daddy like, what's going on with you and my daughter though? Of course, Mike looking all scared shit. He was like, um, well, you know, I came here because I just wanted to lay everything on the table and to just be honest. And then like, you know, fuck all that. You got a wife or ex-wife. Like, what's going on? I'm real confused right now. Mike is like, well, you know, I got a wife, but we going through a divorce. You know what I'm saying? The whole process done started. Daddy looked at Megan. Did he get your ass some papers? Nope, he didn't. Okay, so I'm still confused. Okay, you got kids? How many kids you got, young little nigga? How many, how young, how old is them damn kids? Mike is like, I got two kids. My youngest baby is four months. He said, oh, your youngest baby, four months, right? Let me hold this. Megan, how long you and this nigga been together, though? You said again. Megan's like, we been together for three years, daddy. So four and then three, okay? That math don't add up to me. What the hell is you doing here? What the hell is you want to do with my daughter? Mike is with this whole, you know, I want to give... Another try with me and her, and we gonna talk it out, and whoop de whoop, and just all this shit that was just getting on my dog on nerves. Daddy like, look here, bump all that. Let me just let you know this. I'll take a bullet for this one, and I'll give out some bullets for this one. I ain't a killer, but little nigga, don't push me, don't test me. I know niggas that work from the po house to the hoe house to the goddamn military to the to the big house, all right? I know wardens and all of that. 
Nigga, I got eyes on you. You don't even know I got around everywhere. So you mess over my daughter again. I'm going to be after your ass with razor blades, lemon juice, and sea salt. Notice. Meanwhile, we got Sarah. She back over there at the house with a big butch home girl. Okay. Sarah done found out some shit shit on Mike. Homegirl go over there to the house and like, what's going on? Homegirl done got even more muscly. Like, she's very gentlemanly-ish in her stance. Like, she's like, what's up? What happened, girl? What you need me to do? Like, she, she gives me real bouncer vibes. I'm just saying. Sarah been doing a little bit of investigation of her own. She done looked through her bank statements. Really done Mike's bank statement because she got this little nigga on the family plan. He been giving out calls to everywhere. Landing low, spreading the wide. From New York to Georgia to Maine to here to there to Texas to every doggone where. And she looked at his doggone cash apps. This little Negro wrapped up $1,200 in one month. What? So you got these females out here supplying your gigoloism. Megan is a part of that bunch because Megan was on that doggone list too. Megan, you from Texas, girl. You from Funky Town. I had your back. But you out here supplying this nigga gigolo habits? His gigolo lifestyle? I can't rock with you on that, Megan. I just can't. You know what I'm saying? So big butch home girl, like, look here. You need to leave his ass alone. I hate his ass. I've always hated his ass. I don't know why you with his ass. Mike, toodaloo. She happy. You know what I'm saying? Secretly, I think she feeling Sarah. I'm not saying let that flag fly, girl. Do your thing. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, um, Sarah's hurt. She done found all this information out about Mike. But y'all know what the call kicker of it is. This heifer is paying for the phone, his car insurance, and his doggone health insurance. So Sarah says she finna move in silence on his ass. She finna go ahead, get the divorce. She finna take care of her and her babies and all of that other stuff, right? Now look here, Sarah, I doubt if she ever sees this, but girl, if you ever do see this, child, if you take that Negro back, after all of this crap that he done did to you. Now, mind you, I don't feel sorry for you because you done messed around and had a second child. The first child, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, goddamn what? So I don't feel sorry. But at the same time, baby, don't, don't do it. Megan, if you ever see this, which I ever doubt you will, girl. Girl! Oh, Lord, y'all. Lacey, Shane, and John. This is a hot-ass mess right here. So they done moved into their new house or whatever, right? Really, Lacey new house. Shane just moving in because Lacey paying for everything. But then again, he is the muscle behind their little cam porn. Yeah, any, any of that, any of that. Anyways, they moving into their new house. Shane's still drunk. He getting wasted, okay? He getting damn wasted. So they moving in, and, you know, he's like, okay, yeah, we can do this. And just basically talking about everywhere <laughs> that they can make some more money at. Daddy ends up bringing the kids over, right? Shane has a really good relationship with the kids. One of the babies was, uh, I bet you that's John, baby. Ooh, I'm petty. I'm messy. But one of the little baby boys was crying because he was upset. He didn't want to move from his old house into a new house. And so Shane was there comforting him. Daddy gave Shane that when he came in. Now that night, he was cool with him. Like, what's up? Good to see my food. He was like, all right, cool. I was like, all right, cool. They dapped it up. All right, cool. It is what it is. Shane goes outside in the back and starts talking with her daddy. She tells her daddy that John been sending her text messages about how much he misses her, how much he wants her back, how much he wants that old thing back and he loving her and all of that. Daddy like, look here. <laughs> I love you and I don't want to call you stupid because you my child but bitch don't be dumb. Don't take this fool back. You know what he's capable of. You know he's trying to use this to manipulate your ass. Don't do it. And if anything, you need to let Shane know what's going on because you're supposed to be starting a whole clean slate with your whole new husband and your whole new life, 2020, new year, new me. So you need to let your husband know what's going on. But y'all know Lacey like that drama. She don't want to let him know what's going on. La Lacey gives me that person that likes that, that, that sneakiness, like that gets her off. She likes always having secrets of some kind because... 
when it comes out and shit hit the fan, that's when the girl, she, she loves that. Y'all, so later on, daddy leaving, Lacey walking daddy outside to his car, right? Child, this dumbass Lacey gonna leave her phone on the counter open. I don't know if he went through it, what happened, what, 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 what. But Shane ass ended up going through Lacey's phone, y'all, seeing the text messages between her and John. This nigga hopped in the firecrack. Y'all know he already goddamn drinking. So he goes outside. Oh, I'm getting into it. My little braid trying to run. You better stay your ass there. He goes outside, y'all, with the beer in his hand. What's up? I see the text messages. I know you're talking to John. He ain't gonna come between us. I'm not finna have it. I know what you're doing. Don't fucking do it, okay? Lacey come out like, oh my god, stop it. We're in a new house and all of these neighbors are gonna see what's going on. Like, what are you doing? Oh my god, like, what's going on? So, y'all, they go inside the house. Shane drunk, look. Y'all need to leave right damn now. Because I'm not finna have this shit. I'm not finna do it. Girl, he get mad. He throw his beer across the doggone kitchen. Slam the door. Cameraman outside peeking out through the window trying to see what the hell is going on. They in there yelling, acting the damn fool. Lacey like his neighbors out here. We in this goddamn new neighborhood now. Y'all look. Y'all ain't even lukewarm up in this doggone house. And y'all already out here with this crazy trailer park shit. That's what it is. That's what it is. Don't do that in this goddamn new neighborhood. These folk don't know you. Y'all need to calm that shit down. But y'all, Lacey, y'all know this made Lacey's day, okay? She likes this kind of drama. She ain't gonna be satisfied to one of these niggas knock her in the head with one of their work boots. And then she gonna be hollering victim. I'm just saying. Oh, Lord, y'all. <laughs> My girl Angela and Tony. Oh! Angela mad, y'all. Angela is hot. She out there chain smoking them Paul Malls, carting out the carton. Dada Faye had to come on down to the house and check on her. Dada Faye get out the car. Angie, what's going on? You look hurt. What's going on? Angie, like, oh, Tony done did it. Sit down. Let me let you know what's going on with me and Tony. She lets her know that Tony done been caught up. With the hookers over there at the hotel, he exchanged the rooms for sexual favors and all of that. Donna Faye looking like, well, you gonna let him back? His, she got his shit out here. It, it's out here, but it ain't gone. What, you gonna take it to him? He gonna come in and get it? Like, what's going on, Angie? Now, y'all know he's paroled legally to Angie's house, so he got to be over there at the house. I don't know if he gonna have to sleep on the front lawn, what he gonna have to do, but Donna Faye like, look here. Legally, he supposed to be here. So what is she going to do? She don't want to kick him out. She don't want to. She love him. But at the same time, she's like, look here, I'm tired of being his damn doormat. I'm not going to do this with Tony no more. I gave this food to a nightfall. I'm going to burn this shit up if he don't come again. I don't want him to come back now, Donna Faye. But I love him and he got to come get his shit. Y'all, it's nighttime. It's nightfall. And she wasn't playing a shit. She got an old big bonfire going out there. Look like OKC against Texas bonfire going on out there. She got them Benson and Hedges, baby. She got that Carrie Underwood. Ooh, and you hurt. Next thing you know, here comes Tony pulling up on a motorcycle that she bought for his ass. Why you ain't got the bike back yet, Angie? I don't know. I'm just saying. Baby, he pulls up. She out there on her daddy from taking ass. I told you it's nightfall, Tony. I'm not taking your shit no more, Tony. You can get what's left in the fire, but I'm not going to do it no more, Tony. Tony trying to weasel his way back in, baby. He's trying to finesse the situation. He's like, look here, can we just go back inside of our house? Can we just go back inside and talk? She's like, Tony, I don't want to talk to you no more. I seen it all, Tony. I seen it all. I don't want to talk with you. We've talked more than I want to talk, Tony. Tony done fucked up, but he don't get it. He like, look here. Eventually, she got to calm down. 
Eventually, she's gonna have to let a nigga back in the house. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I'm gonna have to finesse my way back into this situation. Angie ain't trying to hear it, though. She like, look here. We done been through all of this. We done did this, done there, all of that. Tony, I'm not gonna do it no more. Tony, I'm not gonna do it. For a minute, I thought she was finna break down and let his ass back in the house, but she stuck to her guns. She didn't do it. Big Ange, I'm proud of you. Child, he had to get back on his motorcycle. And now, well, no, he didn't get back on the motorcycle, child. Ange done went back in the house with the rest of her car and the cigarettes and her Carrie Underwood and her Schlitt small liquor. She done went back in the house. It's like, Tony, I'm not going to do this. You can sit out here and watch shit burn up, Tony, but I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Y'all, so she left Tony sitting out there, <laughs> standing up there looking like a broke dick dog, not knowing what the hell to do with his goddamn self. Y'all, the episode ended from right there. Now, look at Ange. Don't let Tony back in. Don't do it, Ange. Don't do it. But, y'all, if y'all seen some of the previews from the next couple of episodes, eh, I'm side-eyeing your ass, Ange. I'm side-eyeing your ass. Y'all, that was the end of the episode right there. Like, look here. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Come on now. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you. And I sure enough appreciate you.